So next, there are some other bond provisions. I mean, there are probably 10 times this amount of possibilities, but these are fairly common ones. So let's go through these. The first is a call provision. And you can think of a call as an option that gives the right of the holder of the call option the right to buy. Now, notice it's the right to buy, but not the obligation to buy. So that's, that's what we mean by a call option. The right, but not obligation, to buy a certain thing at a certain price over a certain time period. That's what a call option is. The issuer, in our example, Halt Widget Company, may say, okay, I want to issue a bond that has a face amount of $100 million. However, I want the right to buy back those bonds earlier than maturity. So what happens here is now think of who's hurt and who's benefiting from this particular provision. Clearly, if there's an option that the issuer keeps for itself to do an early retirement of the bond, it's to the advantage of the issuer because they don't have to do it, but they may do it. So that, that uh, right gives them some value. So what would happen is that the buyers of the bond know that they may get a call and therefore their view of the bond is not as favorable and therefore to buy the bond they need a better yield. And so that's what we mean by a callable bond. It is a right of the issuer. However, it will also create a disincentive for the buyers and therefore a decrease in the price of the bond. And so that's what we call a call provision. Most of these have deferred call, which just means it's at a certain point in time, so you can't issue it today and call it tomorrow. So the trigger point is usually a period of time out, one, two, three years after the issuance of the bond. Furthermore, there might be a declining call premium. So over time, as it gets close to maturity, the premium, which means the amount of money paid to the holder of the bond, that little extra money may decline as well. So that's a, the first group of provisions called call provisions. The second is a sinking fund. So a sinking fund, think of it as a, a box that you have on your table. And you're trying to set aside money so that at the end of the five years in this case, you don't have to come out of pocket for 100 million that you have not provided for. So this is not a requirement um, in bonds, but it is essentially a, an inducement. It's kind of an attractive thing. If you're the buyer of the bond, you'd feel good if the issuer is setting aside money along the way so it's not a big shock at year five when they have to come up with a hundred million dollars. What this means is that it's advantageous to the buyer of the bond and disadvantageous to the issuer of the bond. Therefore, it leads to a more attractive bond and a higher price. So what this means is that the sinking fund is based on what happens with the, with the bond. Now, there are two ways for the sinking fund to be operationalized. One is that they set the money in a box. That's the excuse uh, I had earlier. Uh, I'm going to put money in the, in the box and we'll keep it for five years. The other way is for them to reduce the amount outstanding. So this method of dealing with the sinking fund is not to put it in a box on your table, but rather go to the market, buy back some of your stock along the way. That version of a sinking fund is actually a misnomer because you're actually doing an early retirement of some of the bonds. So that's what happens in the case. And in general, sinking fund is favorable to the investors if they have see the, the market re reducing the indebtedness over time. However, if the rates decline over time and now the company is buying back their bond, now they're not happy, right? Because their yield will be lower in the future once they get back the money. So sinking funds as a general proposition are favorable to the people that hold the bond, especially over the life of the bond. However, if you're the one that has to or gets called with an early prepayment, then it's not favorable in a declining interest market.